Blog Talk Radio. Excuse me, but she mom don't care if you a real yeah. uh, Gonna take more than that for me to deal with ya Don't care about your car cribs or your figure Z I got my own part in me Yeah, boy, stop, you gon' have to come better than me Boy, stop, I don't really view you as a cash Yeah, you kinda cute, you got a little cash Put them down the glass and boy, you ever rest I hey, know she's a big okay. boy, yes Welcome to the show, I just got off the phone with uh, Victor so I was just double checking that uh, you guys had the number to be able to call in. Yeah. So. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, yeah, let's just go uh, go get into everything. Don't worry, the show isn't live right now, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot shoot it back out uh, live in a little under a week. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get the interview cracking. You know, got you here on IHE Magazine, our Urban Intel Radio. So. I wanted to uh, go a little bit into your background, you know, after me being able to receive some information through Victor on you and seeing and um, hearing some of the stuff you do. I, I, I think he sent me a couple of tracks or one track. It was I Ain't Her, and I heard that, uh-huh. and I was like, I was impressed. I was like, dang, okay, she's really doing something. So, you know, um it, it, t- tell tell uh, the audience a little bit about your background as far as where you f- originally from out um, uh, in your area, and, uh, you know, let's just start with that. Okay, I'm from California. That's um, Southern California, Los Angeles County, Los, like Los Angeles area. Um, most people have heard of Compton, so it's like across the street from Compton. <laughs> uh, right. That, yeah, it's food. You know, born and raised yeah. in California. Yeah, that's where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, rep, repping, rep, repping that what's up, you know. And, yeah. you know, when, when you you coming out of, you know, an area like Watts, which, you know, you got so much history at the same time with the city and so much hardships, you know what I mean, where it, it, it's, it's, it's riddled with, you know, uh, many different problems with the poverty and, and things like that. But then at the same time, you have the diamonds in the rough, which goes with your name, you know, uh, 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 that are able to go ahead and surpass some of these elements. I mean, how did you find your focus in being able to pursue music the way you did and and and, and uh, get up out of there? Um, I think that was the main driving force, just wanting something different, just, you know, wanting to not, continue that cycle and, you know, be, live that life. You know, I just, the, the fact that I wanted better for myself and my family, you know, and my future generations, I'm like, you know what, I have to do something, you know. So that was the main, that is the main drive behind, you know, my work, my work ethic is just, you know, making my life, changing my life and those around me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely hear that. And for you, I mean, with, with uh, you know, people, if they haven't heard Canary Diamonds yet, really they're sleeping because, I mean, there's so many artists out there. And, you know, when you actually hear somebody that has the, 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 this level of skill and has a talent with it, you know, it's like a breath of fresh air. So really what... You know, there's so many outlets that, you know, you probably could have went ahead and looked towards to try to get yourself out the hood and try to go ahead and rise up out of, you know, the the monotony that was going on. What made the outlet become music for you? What made you want to go ahead and target hip-hop? Um, It's always just been something I've always loved. Like, I've always, I was since a kid, um... I was always, like, doing something entertainment-driven, you know. Since a kid, I was, I've been an actress. You know, I was a, I started acting, like, at four. So um, I've always been around the entertainment industry. Then I became a dancer and, like, a background hip-hop dancer. And I was dancing background and doing choreography for major artists at that age of 11. So I was, wow. like, you know, 
that music has always been a part of me. Um, dancing has always, dancing has always, dancing was my first love, you know, so, but that, you can't have dancing without music, you know, so music exactly. is always been a part of me. So, um, you know, I just decided, you know, I'm good. You know, it, I didn't even decide. <laughs> it was a, tell me, you know, like, oh, you're good. You, you know, you sound good. You have a great voice. And I'm like, oh, really? I do? Okay, well, maybe I'll try this music thing, you know? So. Right. Yeah. Right. And obviously it was a good choice because, I mean, in in your career um, and in, in the time, the amount of time that you've been doing it, I mean, you've already made headway with being able to work with people that are respectable in the game, like Mac Tens and, you know, the game and, you know, uh, big artists like Chingy. And um, I even saw that you had opened up for, you know, uh, KRS-One, you know, which is very respectable. I mean, that, that, that type of level of being able to work with these types of artists, I mean, um, how 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 was it that you came about being able to work yourself into that niche of being able to mess with a lot of the majors um, on the level that you are? Um, it's just working, working out there, networking, and out there grinding. You know, um, one link link you to another link. You know, so you just out there, just, you know, putting myself out there, performing, and you know, networking with other artists and stuff like that, and. At one point, I mean, like, the one point, like, Harris, one game, Chingy, Mac-10, most of those people that I've worked with came to me, and that's been the big lesson. You know, the big lesson has not been me having to go out there and be like, oh, please work with me, please work with me, please. You know, like, right. I'm really good at listening to my stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> it hasn't been that. You know, most most major artists I have worked with heard about me and decided to say, you know what, um. Yeah, let's work. Uh, you know, so that's that's been a blessing. But those came about by me being out there, you know, networking, performing, you know, getting my name out in the streets and stuff like that. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of artists, you know, and I agree with what you said when they're coming to you. That definitely says a lot. Cause there's a lot of people that run up on a lot of artists where you might even have it now, where they have this thirsty mentality. You know, and it, it it becomes almost a turnoff. But when you know that people are coming to you, it you know that goes without saying. Your your music speaks for itself. I mean, right. So you know, really, as far as out in L.A., you know, you you got you got Compton that's been popping for a long time with um, putting out some of the major West Coast artists out there. What would you say compared to maybe Watts? How would you feel the music scene for the West Coast and Watts compares to maybe something bigger like Compton, South, uh, South Central, or Long Beach, or something along those lines? Um, it's all the same, basically. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's okay. not, it's not, it's not different. It's, it's the same. You know, Compton and Watts is just a street, literally a street apart. Right. Um. So you know, it's, it's the same. It's the same lifestyle. It's the same influences. It's the same. It's it's all the same. So, yeah. Okay. Um, if if for us different. on the West Coast, we 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 get it all. But for the people that might be listening, and they're in New York, and they're in Chicago, you know, that clarification right. helps them a lot because all they might hear is primarily a particular city. But then it all comes into being one and the same when you have somebody out of the area explaining that to them. Um, Right. Now, for you, Canary, um, right now, are you are you with a major label right now? Or are you still pushing independent? No, I'm independent, um, yeah. and I like it. I love it. Uh, I would <laughs> be independent until an absolutely deniable deal come across my plate. Um, until then, it's independent, you know. I, it's an independent game right now, you know. Um, right. Internet kind of messed up for the <laughs> big labels and stuff, you know, so. It's an independent game right now. We getting back to that. So, like I said, unless it's an actual undeniable, absolutely undeniable deal, um, pendant, right. all thing independent. Would you would you say for most artists that are trying to get in the game that might look at someone like you that's you know making headway, um, 
and they're trying to find whether they should get a deal or not, would you say trying to remain independent and building their name would be the way to go or try to go ahead and seek out a bigger deal? Is it different artist to artist or, you know, um, that's just the way you see it? Um, from my personal experience, independent is the way to go because you have it's, – it's a business. It's not, yeah, this is something you love to do. Yeah, this is something – um, creative, but at the end of the day, it's business. Um, at the beginning of the day, it's business. When you wake up, it's business. So yeah. you have to, you have to build, you have to build equity in your brand. You know, you're a brand as an artist. You're, you're not an artist. You just don't make music. You know, you're a brand. So you have to build mm-hmm. the brand. You know, you have to make the brand, you know, attractive. So people, you need to get out there and network and work hard and build your brand and make your give your brand a big name, you know, give it some buzz. And they'll come to you. They'll come to you. Mm-hmm. If your buzz is big enough, your brand is big enough, they'll come to you. And when they come to you, they have to be more flexible. But when you go to them, they can take and do whatever they want to because you need them. They don't need you, mm-hmm. you know. So, right. yeah, and, as a, and as a was... new artist, build your brand before you go no, run into the label. What you said was uh, absolutely true, 100%. And I like something that you said in there. You said make your brand very attractive, and that's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And that's that's something that it seems that you've had a lot of success with because what people don't know is Canary Diamonds outside of just music You've had a lot of success with television from, you know, being on MTV, BET, Oxygen, VH1, all the music stuff, the reality TV, Bad Girls Club, you know, the Fab Lane. uh, I mean, the list goes on with the stuff that you've been able to be a part of. And Mm -hmm. and necessarily, was that something that kind of you stumbled upon and it kind of happened or was that a strategic business move that you looked at as I want to seek out television as well as this music thing? Um, it was at first, it, it's a little bit of both. At first it was something I stumbled on. <laughs> and then okay. I realized that, Hmm, this is a lane, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was something that was kind of stumbled on a, a, at first, but then, um, because, I mean, anybody who really does this music business, anybody who's really in any kind of entertainment business know that it's not the glitz and glamour that people see on TV. You know, mm-hmm. your average artist is broke. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the average, name and all, big name and all, the average is broke. So <laughs> I, you Tell know, it. so I'm thinking out, like, I got bills to pay. You know, so I'm like, dang, I'm going to pay bills. You know, I, mm-hmm. um, I got a placement with an old partner of mine in um, – my first placement was waist, was it waist deep or was it like my, it, I, I believe it was waist deep, you know, um, when waist deep and then I seen that check, I'm like, okay, this is a land, right. you know, so, yeah, you know, I pursued yeah. that, I pursued that and, you know, I uh, to date I have over 300 songs played oh, nice. throughout, so, yeah. Yeah, nice. And so, you know, you you start to go ahead and you freak something like that. And like you said, it becomes a lane for you and it opens mm-hmm. up a whole new avenue of opportunity where, you know, you don't you, you, you're not a one trick pony. You know, right. you're basically able to do a plethora of different things. I mean, um, right now, what would be. What, what would you say is your primary focus? Is it um, more on the music side, or is it in the entertainment as far as television, movies, film side? Um, right now, my main focus is music. I'm actually working on my EP right now. So that's my main focus. But, you know, in the midst of that, <laughs> I'm doing other stuff. Like I'm about to start filming a, a new film in about two weeks called Concrete okay. Jungle. Um, it's an L.A.-based film. So. You know, I'm I'm just working. I'm just doing it all, but my main focus is my EP, my new project. You know, give give the people some new music. Right, right, yeah. I mean, and and at your you know your age, especially, you know, at being able to accomplish the things that you're already doing, 
um, as a brand an entrepreneur. You know, you have your head on strong, and you know you set an example for uh, a lot of a lot of these. Uh, other artists or business entrepreneurs that want to be able to do the same things that you're doing, it might be a lot older, you know. And right. um, the the nice thing that I've seen with music is that, you know, I saw that you are uh, part Puerto Rican and you've tapped into a whole other demographic with being able to do a few, um, a couple of reggaeton uh, type things, and then you've uh, been mm-hmm. able to go ahead and give back to your roots. You want to elaborate on a couple of uh, tracks you did uh, pertaining to that? Yeah, um, the main one I did was, it's called Candy Girl. I did with Tati and Ali from um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, right. She's featured on the hook. Uh, I did that. It's reggaeton album, uh, reggaeton song. It was on a compilation, a universal compilation called Puto Fuego, that was released in Puerto Rico. Um, you know, I just, no. I just wanted to do something, get back to my roots, and do that. So I did that with her, and it came out great, and it was real well received. You know, um, I plan on in the future to get, you know, to get back into that, do a little more, make sure of that. And, you know, I just wanted to do something for them. I wanted to do something for my people, you know. <laughs> right, right. No, I agree. And so, I mean, with you, if if somebody listens to your stuff, you spit like you spit like a regular fem C and an M C. You got <laughs> You, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, she got some skills. It wasn't like, you know, I was just listening to, you know, I'm not going to say names, but just some of these, you know, poo butts. You know, it was actually something mm-hmm. that you you really were getting down with some lyrics. And uh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. That's something that, you know, I highly respect every time I hear somebody that's going to get down on something. And uh, what what would you say some of your biggest influences were, with creating the style that we would see as Canary Diamonds today? Uh, some of my biggest rap influences are, of course, the West Coast legends, um, N.W.A., you know, mm-hmm. Dr. Dre, Q, you know, Ice-T, Tupac, of course. But then, like, I, I have been heavily influenced by, like, Nas and Jay-Z. You know, when it was beefing, I was a Nas fan, and I couldn't <laughs> Of course, but now of course. That Good the answer. Beef is over. <laughs> now that the beef yeah. is over, like he I'll be said, Jay, like, Jay's Jay my nigga. No right? I he, <laughs> I can't. He can't do no wrong in my eyes. Like he's just amazing to me. You know, um, he's like my main rap influence to date. You know, he 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 just can't do no wrong to me. Um, but I like I like a lot of. I don't have a specific um, favorite. You know, I don't have a specific like, oh, I like this person, this person, this person, this person. I only have one, and that's Jay-Z. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but everybody else, you know, I listen to all kind of, kind of music, all genres. You know, I'm just influenced by different things and different vibes. You know, I believe music should mean something. Like, it should make you feel something. It should make you think. It should make you, it should help you through a situation. So anything, any song that does any of that I'm influenced by, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I, I like what you said because uh, most most of the artists that you brought up were all people that had content, something to speak mm-hmm. about. When it was NWA, Ice-T, Ice Cube, everybody had some topics that they were relaying with uh, right. a message you know that that so it made the music um, a little bit more fulfilling, you know, and right. um, that's that that's something that definitely you know we can use more artists bringing that back today, which is good. And uh, and also you still have to have the feel good, grown and sexy things that's popping. Right. You know, you got to go uh, go ahead and have a, a balance of a little bit of both, but not just too much on one side. I want I want right. you. Uh, Tell me a little bit about um, the new project that you're working on right now, because I know that um, the single that I received earlier that was part of it, and um, what what's going on with that due date? How many tracks? Where can people get it? All that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm working on it right now. It'll, it'll be about eight to nine tracks. It's an EP. 
Um, it should be, I'm pushing for this summer, you know, like okay. May, June, release date. You know, uh, I don't have any features lined up yet because I'm not the one that go after features for names. I go after features for feel, you know, whoever matched the record best. So I don't, right. I'm, I'm, I'm creating, steady creating, creating before I go out and do that. Uh, and I'm just working right now, but it's called, the name of the EP is called Beauty for Ashes. And nice. it's, it's. I'm working on it, and I'm excited. I'm working on it with Young Yanni and Epic the Don. And I'm really excited. It's coming on really good. You know, it's a, I'm switching it up a little bit, you know, but I think people are going to love it. They're going to love it that I, you know, the, the change is not a drastic change, but I think they're going to love the change, you know. So I'm really excited. I'm excited for everybody to hear it. I'm pushing for May, June-ish. You know, I don't want to rush it, though. So, yeah, okay, so that's out. <laughs> great. Is when it comes out, yeah, definitely. And now I I saw um, I saw a video that you had done. I can't remember. I think it might be. What's the video on your website? I think when you first enter, it's you, and I can't remember the artist. The artist, it's a male. He's singing, and and it's you on the verses. Ready. Yeah, it's called Ready yeah. to Fly. Okay, is that yeah, on the album as well? No, that was on my previous um, project, No Gravity. Okay. That, that, that was, that's available on iTunes right now. You want to pick it up? <laughs> okay. Um, that was okay. my latest project, No Gravity. Yeah, that was that was my last single for my, la- my latest project, Ready to Fly. It's actually featuring Epic, and it was produced by Epic. So, yeah. Okay. And what, um, what, what year did that come out? Was that last year's or the year before? Yeah, I, I released it on iTunes last year. Last year? Okay. So, yeah, everybody can still get something that's way current and way relevant right now from Canary Diamonds, you know, iTunes. You can go ahead and uh, cop that and uh, be able to, you know, that's that's something to hold them pretty much over until the next one comes out. You know, that's okay. how I feel. But, yeah, that, that song was popping when I heard it, too. So I, I think I've, I heard three joints back-to-back, and all of them were popping. So, you know, really Thank I you. can't um, – yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I can't expect anything less from it. So, I mean, as far as the game the game right now, um, you know, if, if, if you, you're looking at it as whole, you know, good and bad and everything, if there was one thing – you could change about the game right now, what would it be? Um, it would be the politics. You know, there's politics in every business. And, you know, politics, the sad part about politics in this industry is that it's a creative industry. You know, and the politics often mess up the creativity of this industry. You know, that's why you have a lot of people who sound alike. That's why you have a lot of stuff with no substance because they're looking at the politics of things and not the actual creative, you know, energy, organic energy of being a creator and, you know, creating music. So I think the politics mess up the creative side of this business. So if I could get rid of anything, it would be definitely be the politics of things. Mm, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. It's a lot of sense. Um as far as music wise, you know, going right back to that organic creative, you know, um sense and mentality if without any of the politics, if you have a chance to work with anybody in the game, whether it's hip hop, R and B, rock, whoever, who are some of the artists that in the future you would like to be able to um put together a project with? Um, definitely Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I already knew that. That's that. That's not a. You didn't even have to list that. I think everybody already knew. <laughs> Jay Z, this is a shout out to you. If we could get this interview to Jay Z, this whole interview right. is for Jay. <laughs> Look, Jigga, come on, Jigga. Come Look, on, this is, My Jigga. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is that call to action for Jigga right now. <laughs> right. Um. Definitely, like. That's that's just my ultimate my ultimate feature, you know. Um, Jay, I like I I would like to do some more things with Kendrick. 
you know, um, that's mm-hmm. somebody I really respect business and creative wise, you know. Kendrick, um I don't really have a big feature list because like again I said I'm I'm not the one that goes off a name. You know, I don't look I'm not the artist that look at other artists and be like, Oh, I wanna work for him because he's popping right now, you know. I work I look at my features like he will kill this record, you know, and he will bring this record to life. So I don't I, know. I, I, I mean I would love I can more hear you uh like, you could be sick with even Nas. Right. I'm I think, definitely yeah. like Nas yeah. can be a feature in my whole life. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Nas can just feature in my life. Um, <laughs> oh, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a uh, Nas. How about getting that life feature? <laughs> right. How about get that life feature? Um, <laughs> Of course not. I mean, <laughs> Either you just wake up in the morning and just have him standing there and give you a motivational quote. Right. right. Uh, that's the feature of my life. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, yeah, Nas, of course. Um, female-wise, you know, Lauren Hill, I would love to do something with mm. Lauren. Even Eve, you know, as far as female rap, I love Eve. You know, I think Eve is yeah. kind of underrated, you know. Um, she did yeah, a lot. Raw, actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, she crossed a lot of, a lot of. She broke down a lot of doors and crossed over mm-hmm. so effortlessly, and pe- a lot of people don't realize, you know, the things Eve did for Had female. Done. Um, yeah, 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 right. So, you know, I would love to do Eve. You know, do something with Eve. That would be amazing. Yeah, I, I, shoot, I, I think a lot of those features you named should be, like, right around the corner for you. Right. You know, um, basically, yeah. So, yeah, those are um, definitely, when you said Eve, yeah, I could definitely see something like that, the the whole look, the whole vibe. And, you know, um, she she's always bringing up something original. So, right. yeah, and um, so besides... Besides, you know, you got the album. You said you got you got the movie um, that you're gonna be working on in two weeks. I mean, any anything else? I mean, in in the big, you know, scheme of Canary Diamonds that uh, people should be remembering, keeping an eye out for because, you know, um, besides having Nas as a life feature, I mean, <laughs> what. I mean, any other uh, big, big plans that we should be ready for that you're going to hit us with? Yeah, um, I have a lot of other scripts I'm working on right now, you know, that they're solidified. So definitely be looking out for more acting stuff and, like, you know, film film things. Um, other than that, you know, check out my, my latest single, I Ain't Her, you know, requested at your – Local radio stations, online radio stations, XM radio stations, every radio station. <laughs> Just request <laughs> that. It's called I Ain't Heard. It's produced by Young Yanni. It's co-written by Eric Billinger, who's really doing his thing right now in the West. So, yeah, um, make sure you guys check that out and request that. Any shows coming up or anything like that, concerts? Yeah, well, behind this EP, I'm going to put on a on a, a promo tour, so I'm going to hit all major markets. So look out for that, too. Check my website, okay. canarydiamonds.com, for a bit. Okay, and and uh, anything as far as people interested in booking Canary Diamonds or anything, is there any contact information that's special towards just that like, uh, uh, for them to reach you? Yeah, you can ask for booking Hit Canary Diamonds, booking Canary Diamonds with a K, diamonds with a S at gmail.com. Canary Diamonds booking at gmail.com. Okay, well, shoot, that, that that's uh, it on my side. You know, unless you have anything else that we didn't cover that you want to speak on, you know, um, yeah, that wraps it up to a close for me. But, yeah, if there's anything else that you want to go ahead and tell the people and let them know, go ahead and do it now. But, yeah, my questions, you done said everything that I needed to hear. <laughs> cool. Well, no, just thank you for having me. And make sure you guys follow me on Instagram, at CanaryD, 
and Twitter at CanaryD and like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash CanaryDiamond.